Hello, hello, we are live. Today I'm going to give you three tips for getting portion sizes right on the FODMAP diet. All right, if we haven't met yet, I'm Julie O'Hara. I'm the founder of Calm Belly Kitchen, and our website provides recipes and resources to help you take control of your digestion and feel better than ever. All right, let's get into these tips. So portion size is a big deal on the FODMAP diet. You've probably heard that phrase or seen it in a Facebook group. Um, you know, people will say that to newbies a lot, you know, to, to help, you know, give them tips. Portion size is so important, okay? But what do we really mean when we say that? I, I think a lot of times that it doesn't get explained very clearly and it, people think it's, it's a bigger deal than it really is. And it's important, but it's not as difficult as it might seem. So if you just follow these tips and kind of pay attention to some specific things that I'm gonna talk about, you'll be much, much, much closer <laughs> really to getting portion size right on the FODMAP diet. And I guess I'll start with kind of a bonus tip. I have three tips, but the bonus tip if you're going to really watch your portion sizes, which you should, is to get the Monash FODMAP app. Uh, it is the best app for the FODMAP diet because it's created by the researchers and scientists who designed the FODMAP diet in the first place and who continue to test foods on a regular basis and keep the app up to date. They do amazing work and um, I highly recommend it. All right, enough about that. I could talk about that more. So the first tip with portion size is to eat foods with no upper limit according to your appetite. And I'll explain what I mean by upper limit. So this is why I said the Monash app is so important. When you look at a food on the app, they will tell you if there's an upper limit or a serving amount where the food crosses over into high FODMAP territory. So if a food does not have an upper limit listed or if it says no FODMAPs were detected, you can eat those foods freely. Um, that is a direct quote from the Monash blog. So you don't always have to stick to the exact servings on the Monash app. So for something like rice, where there's no upper limit, a lot of people have the misconception that you can only eat one cup of rice because it says a serving is one cup. No, that is just a standard serving based on the nutritional data, you know, that like the USDA or the Australian equivalent of that provides for all people just to have serving and nutrition guidelines. But if you are a larger person, larger bodies need more energy, <laughs> more calories. If you have a bigger appetite, if you like to eat three big meals, it's okay to go over the servings on these foods that don't have upper limits. So if you're really hungry at lunch, you can eat one and a half cups of rice. So the tip is eat foods with no upper limit according to your appetite. So that actually kind of frees you up when it comes to watching portion sizes. Okay, so tip number two. To eat multiple fruits and veggies in one meal, you should include at least one FODMAP-free option. All right, let me explain. So a question I get a lot is, how do I combine foods in one meal? Like, will there be FODMAP stacking? Um, you know, will the FODMAP accumulation be too much if I eat a green light serving of carrots, a green light serving of bell peppers, and a green light serving of green beans? And the best way to avoid that, and really the simplest way, is if you're going to have two to three different veggies or pieces of fresh produce in a meal, make sure one of them is FODMAP free. So the way that you know that is to look on the app and it will say no FODMAPs were detected in this food. Um, a couple examples right off the top of my head are strawberries, carrots, I believe potatoes. Um, there's quite a few. It really pays to click in click through on the food and read the notes that they include um, because there's a lot of really useful information there. So when you're gonna combine foods in a meal, don't worry about it. Stick to those green light serving amounts if the food has FODMAPs in it and make sure one of them is FODMAP free. All right, tip number three, we're going fast. Include red and yellow light serving sizes in moderation. All right, so there's a couple things to this. You can eat yellow serving sizes when you're in the elimination phase. Just to, that's a question that comes up a lot. You can. So yellow means moderate, a moderate amount of FODMAPs. And that amount shouldn't cause symptoms in most people. And like all things with the FODMAP diet, these are starting points. So it shouldn't cause you symptoms. You should include those yellow serving amounts if you desire. But the second thing to remember 
is that some foods that show up as having a red light have yellow or green serving amounts. So they can also be eaten on the FODMAP diet in those correct serving amounts. Now, if you've seen the new version of the Monash app, which is available now on iOS, you can see a lot easier, a lot more easily which foods have a variety of, of FODMAP levels. So you might see that avocado is red, but it has a red light amount, a yellow, and a green light amount. Okay, so based on your serving size, that food can be either in the low FODMAP zone or the high FODMAP zone. And Android users, you don't have the new version of the app yet, but according to Monash University on their Instagram, it should be coming in early 2019. And all your info, all your like serving info is up to date. It's just the new design that they haven't been able to roll out yet for Android. So little side, side piece of news for you. But just to recap that tip, you can eat yellow serving, serving amounts and a lot of red light foods have yellow and green serving amounts. So always, always be looking and learning more. All right, so those are my three tips. Um, I think there's a lot there. And <laughs> if you're loving these tips and you wanna go deeper and learn more, I am doing a free training this week on Thursday, October 18th. And all you have to do to get this awesome in-depth training with menu templates to help you figure out how to create balanced low FODMAP meals, join my online support community, Calm Belly Club. So Calm Belly Club is the community that I recently launched and in there you get all of my FODMAP diet programs. You get online support from people who are going through the same things you are, who can help you, who are there to help you and support you. And we also have these monthly trainings on different aspects of the FODMAP diet, as well as monthly Q&A calls. So if you wanna get in on this training, this, this month we're focusing on what can you eat, portion sizes, balanced meals, nutrition, get in on Calm Belly Club. So the link is gonna be in the video description, wherever that is, <laughs> just check it out. Um, it's calmbellykitchen.com forward slash Calm Belly Club. Just, just use the link. So you can join um, for the monthly fee is $12.99 per month. You can ca cancel anytime and you get access to everything, including this training. And if you're watching this after October 18th, the training will be archived in Calm Belly Club. So you'll have a library of, of videos and Q&A calls and trainings. And so you can still get access to this. So check it out. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me and I will talk to you soon. <laughs> oh, I should say. The reason that I have this horrible setup, um, I'm like, I think I'm a little nervous because I haven't been on Facebook Live for a while because we've been moving. And so we're in our new house and my office isn't unpacked yet. And I hate that it looks messy behind me, but that's, that's the story. So thanks for putting up with the mess. I hope these tips helped you and I will talk to you soon.